Toymation. I think it's time I gave it a try. People keep asking me, Justin, how did you animate those toys like that? Well, I'll tell you, but it all comes with a story. Way back in 1983, a new toy came on the scene called He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, and it took my young imagination for a ride. I began to collect these toys where I would have these huge battles and dramatic scenarios with these hysterically named colorful characters. Man-at-Arms, Ram-Man, Manny Faces, Merman, Triclops, and many more awesomely ridiculously named characters that made me giggle as an adult and wonder why I didn't think it was silly at all when I was a kid. I had never seen toys that looked so buff and strong and uh, I loved the idea of Adam being a kid who would someday grow into a big powerful man. Uh, directly reflecting my own desires as a young boy to someday grow up into a, uh, a big strong man that would fight for justice. The animated series totally secured my love and gave me tons of new information about the relationships and the characters themselves that I then could apply onto my living room floor adventures. Just as I suspected. Hello, you metal munching moron. Here I am at 46, having spent 25 years developing my skills as an animator, uh, surrounding myself daily by all of the inspiration that I've found over the years. And one of those constant inspirations was my Motu figures. Bam! What if I bring these characters to life in stop motion? But how? So I started digging. Motu had a new series that came out called Origins, which had way more mobility than the original series, but still looked like the original toys. Ankles, knees, elbows, necks, shoulders, wrists. This could work. I imagined all those dramatic, powerful battles from my youth being created with my adult animation skills. Is it possible? Opposable, maybe that's the question. I think that's the question in any toymation. So, what's the next step? Test those joints. Uh, it's the number one task of, a, of an animator getting a new character or a new puppet is to see what the limitations are. See what kind of mobility you have, what kind of poses you're gonna be able to create. First off, all the limbs pop off. This is very cool if we wanted to wire or modify, do anything. We still didn't know what approach we were gonna take with these puppets yet. No spine bend, which obviously is going to limit a lot of the action, but way more mobility than the original figures ever had. I knew getting good sword fighting means uh, you're gonna need a lot of wrist and spine mobility, which these figures did not have, so I'd need to get creative there. The legs and ankles bent well, but the quad muscles would not give me much range of motion for my taste. Uh, we'll have to figure that one out. I knew we were going to add tie downs to the feet because I like my feet to stay put when I'm animating. I also knew we were going to put in rigs for jumping and tricks, you know, like flips, whatever, some in the chest and some in the back. Since we could pop the arms and legs on and off, we decided to have replacement arms or legs for some of the more extreme actions. So as He-Man or Skeletor would bend their arms, their huge biceps would limit how much range we had. So we had some extra ones that we shave down the biceps a little bit with an X-Acto knife, shave down the quad just a little bit to get a little more raise in the knee. The bent arm or legs easily could be hidden during action, so it was a great technique for the extreme moments. Before and during animation, I need to figure out the weapon. Swords. Since this is dad's imagination, I took two swords and I glued them together and cut off the excess. Beastman's whip. Shell created a wired whip so that I could create the poses needed for any of the whip action. He-Man's shield, it worked great. I just added some sticky wax to the forearm to make sure it had less of a chance of falling off. Next up, set making. Uh, I had this idea that the fight was going to take place on this volcanic rock with cracks of lava coming through. And our good buddy, Adam Skelter, my super powerful concept filmmaker, storyboard buddy, decided to do some concept art for us. And he beautifully illustrated exactly what we wanted 
which was a great piece of artwork to give to Shell as she started working on the set. Now that Shell had the concept art, she spent one week creating the set, carving and painting rocks from insulated foam, uh, coating them in set goop so they were nice and hard and ready to be painted. Aiden then concentrated on the large canvas backdrop that would be our Eternian sky. Once we hung the backdrop up, we tried to do use a veil to create some depth in the image, but that was not giving the right look, so we abandoned that. Shell ended up spray painting the clouds, uh, which was really scary to commit to, but it gave us the exact look we wanted. After spray painting, I took some white chalk and gave the lower painted mountains just a little bit of dimension, some highlighting, some darkening of the rocks, just to give that third layer of rocks going from real set to the final backdrop. Shell created the lava lighting by layering LED strips and some gels uh, right into the carved river canyons, and it looked amazing. Once that last bit of puzzling in the set was done, we knew it was gonna work awesome for the film. Next up, lighting. We called in our buddy and pro DP, Matt Hazelrig, to set up the initial lighting. He spent the day creating the Snake Mountain dark lava world, and it was now time for me to start animating. Animation time! I'm going to take all of my animation knowledge and I'm going to apply it to these super cool characters but somewhat limited toys. So me and Shell choreographed the fight together and I had a general idea of what I wanted to do for the animation. And we decided to start with the fight since this would be the biggest test of the puppets uh, throughout the whole production. After a few long nights of animating and a lot of improv, uh, I was able to find little solutions to, to supplement the, uh, the missing spine bend by putting it more into the hip rotations. And uh, in sword play, because the figures have a certain break point on the wrists, I was able to use some sticky wax, which would allow a little bit more flow as I animated. The next solve I did was for toe bend. Uh, since none of the figures have toe bends, um, what I did is I used a lot of clay that was matching the set colorations and what I could do is I could shove it under the heel as the characters moved and it would basically simulate a toe bend or a, a, a toe roll as the foot carries through and it worked great for the whole short. Shell also added a rig to any of the characters that needed to jump or flip or be airborne during the film and she was able to hide it really cleverly behind their clothing. My last trick was to actually unhook the upper body and put in some clay in between uh, that my daughter had color matched to all the different characters. And what it would have allowed me to do is just get a tiny little bend in there for the few frames or moments of, of extra juice that I needed in my animation. All of this is classic stop motion problem solving and problem solving skills are the number one tool in any animator's toolkit. So bringing back that original question, Justin, how did you make the toys move like that? The way I made those toys move like that is through the fundamentals of animation, applying the principles, timing, spacing, uh, clean arcs, weight, balance, follow through, anticipation. The fundamentals of animation and applying the craft does not matter how limited your characters are, it's going to raise the quality of your work and make your toymation stand out from the crowd. In the end, getting a chance to work on a He-Man film has been a total dream realized. Uh, mixing my love of animation and one of my childhood inspirations. Uh, and then being able to share it with all of the fans uh, and the people that have been touched by Motu over the years is pretty freaking cool. And I hope it touches your little kid hearts just like it touched mine to create this. Thank you. He-Man. Skeletor. Release my father, Beastman. No. They came. Get back in the fight, you furry fool. <laughs> 
simpletons. Must I do everything? He-Man, no, it's a trap. No. He-Man, Castle of Grayskull will be mine! Not as long as I got my powers or... Huh? Where's my sword?